Living space, the oceans, they are affected by increasingly faster alterations, not only caused by climate change. Globalization also has an impact on our largest ecosystem. Besides the sensitive coastal zones, the open seas have also become more and more an economic area with diverse usage demands. In the Graduate School of Glomar, natural and social scientists are jointly educated to tackle the challenges which global change poses to modern marine and coastal research. We are changing the whole environment, not only by changing the climate, but we really change the coastline by building ports, we are deepening the navigation channels, we are building uh, wind energy plants in, in the middle of the ocean, we are having all these oil rigs uh, to to take oil out of the seafloor. So that's really a time where the human beings are more and more shaping also not only the landscape but also the seascape. The basic point is that we try to uh, educate our, our students in a way that they learn the interdisciplinary discourse, that they learn to uh, talk to people that are also engaged in marine sciences but which are from totally different disciplines. For example, the legal regulations for the use of the world oceans. Just legal knowledge is no longer sufficient. My personal advantage is the input I get from all these natural scientists. They explain me what my legal text really means uh, uh, and that improves my personal work. The PhD student Martin Lucas is a geographer and is involved in an Indonesian-German research program. His specific focus is on a lagoon on Java. This ecosystem has dramatically dwindled in only the past 150 years. 60% of the fast-growing population of Indonesia lives in the coastal zone and depends on marine resources. In the background of this rapid environmental change, it is enormously important to find an approach for an equal coastal management and ecosystem management. With a focused training program, Glomar offers its PhD students a target-oriented further education. Geographer Martin Lucas can acquire basic knowledge regarding ecosystems, jurisprudence and sociology, things he needs for his multidisciplinary research work. And in addition, he also needs to learn the Indonesian language. I'm collecting material in form of literature and historic maps. I conduct interviews with people living along the lagoon, with representatives of the government, of non-governmental organizations, and organized focal groups. Back in Bremen, I analyze this material. International experience is a focal aspect of the Glomar Research Training Program. Stephanie Kush spent several months on a research stay in Japan. Foreign scientists regularly work in Bremen. Stephanie Kush investigates a precious climate archive, the deposits at the sea floor. The junior professor, Gesine Mollenhauer, supervises Stephanie's PhD project. If I wouldn't have gone to Japan, to, to that working group, I would never have had the chance to do what I actually did. It's the only working group globally which does exactly this work. So I had to, I definitely had to go there to learn the methods. Longer research stays in other countries and the active participation in international conferences form an integral part of the training concept of the Bremen Graduate School. This aims at integrating the PhD students rather early into the international scientific community. In the last year of her PhD term, Stephanie Kusch also participates in Plan M, a mentoring program for young female scientists. As part of this program, she will be supported and advised by an experienced female professor from Heidelberg in all aspects related to career planning. What we actually want to do is get an eye-to-eye -eye contact to an established female professor in Germany or also outside Germany um, to discuss issues that we have on um, your career and how you can develop, where you want to get, uh, networking, and all the most important things um, to somehow try to establish a more female basis. At the Bremen Graduate School, strong emphasis is put on individual support for the PhD students. The desire to set up a family should not hinder a future career in science. In my case, I got half a year ex extension of my contract, plus funds for childcare facilities. So the PhD students are able to concentrate on their work and don't have to neglect their families. 
which in my case uh, was one reason for already uh, starting with a family. Additional support is offered to the young parents in finding and financing places at day nurseries and kindergartens. This offers Marcus Isola the possibility to focus on both his research and his family. He investigates which environmental conditions cold water corals in the North Atlantic thrive best under, as well as the conditions that cause them to disappear. Nowadays it seems that we have uh, quite vital uh, cold water coral ecosystems of Ireland up to the North Cape and more down south uh, we have for example in the Gulf of Cadiz or of Mauritania um, wide ranges with corals but they're all dead and what we are trying to find out is um, what factors are influencing uh, healthy coral growth or vanishing of corals. Uh, therefore we are using sediment cores uh, from several sites of Ireland, of uh, Mauritania and of Cadiz, uh, and we are trying with uh, geochemical and geophysical um, measurements to find out what influences coral growth uh, on all these sites. Marcus Isola tries to find out the reasons for this within the frame of a European research project, one that deals with sensitive deep sea ecosystems. Already down to 1,000 meters of water depth and even beyond, humans interfere with the sensitive system ocean. Deep sea and coastal research, at Glomar these go side by side. Of course we have a need for management of the coastal zone and that only can be done in with a kind of uh, interaction between all the different sciences, but the sciences, the natural science and the social sciences, only can bring the, the basic knowledge you need to do the management. The management itself has to be done, at least according to our rules we have here, by whatever kind of administration. And so that's the next step then, to bring the scientists in, in the dialogue with the administration. The biggest question for nowadays and for the future will be to integrate all these different demands human beings bring to the oceans with each other and with the conservation needs which are also required to save the oceans. At the Bremen Graduate School Glomar, young natural and social scientists are jointly trained. Thus, they develop an interdisciplinary understanding for the open research questions regarding global change in the marine realm.